Hi, I'm Rafael Gomez, host of TLN Speaking Freely, and over the last several weeks, host of the Toronto Mayoral Candidate Interviews. Today, we have Olivia Chow, who recently threw her name into the ring and has immediately vaulted to one of the top spots in this mayoral candidacy race. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for taking the time. No problem. So we've had several candidates already on the show, and uh, one of the things that I've always started with is the kind of obvious question, uh, why? <laughs> why are you entering the ring? You've been in politics a long time, both municipal, federal, provincial. Um, what brings you to the mayoral candidacy race this time around? Mm -hmm. There's a f frustration in the air, mm -hmm. uh, because life is really unaffordable. Like, I think back when I was 18, when I was 13, I actually immigrated with my mom and dad, mm. like many of us, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, we lived in St. James Town. Mm -hmm. My mom only had one income as a hotel maid mm. because my dad had mental health issues. Uh, she was able to pay the rent and fed the family. You know, it's much harder now. Mm -hmm. That's close to impossible with the rent being so high, with a very low income. That's hard. And that sense of we're one or two paychecks away from getting in trouble mm -hmm. is what I'm really concerned about. The other thing is about feeling stuck, mm -hmm. stuck in traffic, mm -hmm. which I just was, okay. uh, stuck waiting for buses, stuck waiting for affordable housing, mm. stuck waiting for better childcare uh, or your kids' um, recreation programs, stuck even waiting for 911. Right. Right? It's yeah. just being put on hold. First time it, ever I was put on hold. We saw a burning car on the highway. Oh I've never God. experienced this. We were on hold. Yeah. Yeah. My dad mm. couldn't breathe because mm. he was in his 90s mm. in a nursing home. Call 911. I was on the hold. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh my God, mm -hmm. I can't stand by. We, we have to do better. So that's why I jumped in and mm -hmm. said, come on, together, let's create a more affordable, more caring, mm. a safer city mm. where everyone belongs. Sure. So a couple of things um, just with that um, explanation of why you, you entered the race. And thanks for sharing some personal stories mm -hmm. there. One of the things was where you've come from, li but literally today, you know, you were probably somewhere closer to the downtown part of the city. We're here at TLN Studios, which is located in the northwest part of the city in a cultural center, the mm -hmm. Columbus Center, uh, which, which actually extends its services to the entire community here, mm -hmm. originally for the Italian immigrant community. That's right. um, th this portrait of a city of, of immigrants who came in various waves and who struggled and strived, but who kind of succeeded, you're very much worried that that picture is going to end, that the, the sort of tradition of each generation getting better uh, is, is not occurring. But what could a city mayor do in that case? What do you think is actually at your disposal? A whole lot, mm. a whole lot, because our city is a great, magnificent city, mm -hmm. diverse, mm -hmm. um, peaceful mostly, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, very innovative and creative. Mm -hmm. I think of the culture we have here. As a mayor, you set a tone for something that we could be more caring. So, building affordable housing, mm. better public transit. If you have better transit, fewer cars on the street because people are taking transit, right? You don't have to wait so long for buses. Mm. You can make the city safer by investing in better social conditions uh, and also people that need hmm. a home mm -hmm. in order to deal with their mental health issues so they could heal, that's hmm. all that is for the city. And think about when our kids connect, mm -hmm. magic happens, no matter which language, what culture, which country we come from. Where do they connect? Community centers, swimming pool, libraries, right? Uh, those are places where people can come together and feel belong. And they're under the remit of the city, right? I mean, that's Absolutely. Their, that's All their, the things I wow. just described really belong to the city government. Sure. Um, maybe coming up with something you just mentioned briefly, and I don't know if you intentionally mentioned it, but you mentioned buses. Yes. Again, out in this part of the city, that's what gets people from point A to point B. That's Often right. that's neglected, right. 
by again the I would say the dominant sort of speaking uh, voices that talk about civ uh, city projects. They leave the buses out of the equation, but that's where the majority of Torontonians actually move, especially in the outer suburbs. Mm -hmm. Can mm -hmm. you speak to some of the policies that you've in the past promoted and mm -hmm. what you would do going forward if you were mayor? Well, more buses. Right okay. now, there's a whole lot of buses sitting in the bus barn, mm -hmm. okay? They're sitting idle even though there's nothing wrong with the buses. Why? Well, because there's not enough operating money. What, what mm -hmm. the city government did recently was they cut the funding, which means that you have to wait longer for the buses, but you have to pay more. Mm. Well, that's totally unfair. Normally, when you pay more, you get better service. Mm. Right now, you pay more for public transit on TDC fare, you get less. Mm. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one thing for sure I would fix. Okay. And now maybe... Because I don't <laughs> have a car. <laughs> right. You mentioned... I take public transit. <laughs> right, right. And to get out here, you probably are promoting also these other alternatives, right? The, mm -hmm. the subway, but the subway can only get you so far, so you have to take a bus if you mm -hmm. wanted to use public transit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, one is issue, though, maybe it relates now, maybe I'll, I'll talk about it, that's prevented people from, say, using as much public transit, especially post-pandemic and the issue uh, of lockdowns, which pushed a lot of people into the uh, uh, out of the homeless shelters, but into our, our, our institutions that remained open. One was the subway. Mm -hmm. um, people a lot of talking about the safety of our public transit system. Do you have any thoughts on that? And do you do you buy into the the view that this this system is uh, dysfunctional and it's and it's it's not safe and do you have any policies that can address that mm -hmm. the safety issue in particular yeah tonight mm -hmm. there'll be 75 people that's called up and say I need shelter mm -hmm. I just got evicted I have no home to go to uh, and it's raining hopefully not but mm -hmm. it might mm -hmm. uh, they are going to be turned down so what do they do if it's raining or it's too cold or something? They go into a library, but if it's late in the night, they go and take the TDC, they go, and take and go into the subways, they take bus from one end to the city to the other end. TTC is not supposed to be a shelter. Right. And it is sheltering homeless people, right? That's strictly not fair. It's not designed that way. So we need to change that more shelter, mm -hmm. right? Number two, as you remember, the mother of Gabriel uh, McAleese, right. that, that poor young man that was killed and killed some way, mm -hmm. in the middle of her grief and despair and pain, she said, take better care of each other and look at the social conditions make sure you get people mm -hmm. first before they get into crisis right. situation. So I think there's a combination, better shelter, better housing, better community support, mental health support. Mm -hmm. uh, if the person is addicted, uh, dealing with the uh, addiction, right? right? And then of course, the security piece, which is uh, recently TDC just got $15 million more for uh, people to patrol mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sometimes police officers. But TDC cutting money means that there are fewer... Uh, just station attendants. And I, I go into Absolutely. stations. Absolutely. Go in. Where's the attendant? There's ghost stations, yeah. 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 And I once stood there. I didn't know. It, it, it had a sign that said, we'll be back. And I stood there five minutes, seven minutes. They're still not mm -hmm. back. I thought, mm -hmm. wait a second. Right. This is not right. Yeah. And I mean, the, the alleged perpetrator in that uh, killing was someone who had struggled with mental illness, wasn't being treated, and had other violent offenses in their past. So uh, you're right, that's that's a tangible issue. And on this issue of, of, of just people being absent, uh, there was a story not long ago about Minneapolis, which had a you know beautiful LRT line they built. It was completely automated, and there was no one, no one at stations, no one on the trains. And uh, little by little, it got taken over by <laughs> persons who were taking advantage of that lack of staff and mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. literally they had to put people back on the trains even though they were so supposedly driverless mm -hmm. the human element is so important so yeah. take your point yeah. yeah because we really human beings during the pandemic mm -hmm. we realized connection mm -hmm. feeling you belong mm -hmm. 
some call it the social capital. Yeah. Being able to contribute, being able to make a difference, feeling confident that uh, I'm valued. Mm. Yeah. That piece is so important. We saw it during the pandemic because of the isolation. Now is the time to create a city where we could come together and say, hey, Mm. You belong here, mm -hmm. right? Whether you're new, new immigrant, whether you're rich and poor, mm -hmm. young or old, let's do that for each other. Yeah, and, and just to take that up, you mentioned the pandemic and some of the consequences of, of that and the policies that were taken. One sector that was really affected were our small businesses oh, and our yes. independent business and as a consequence, our main streets. You know, and what Jane Jacobs used to say was the sort of thriving heartbeat of our city, especially like Toronto, these mm -hmm. neighborhoods, the main streets, and the small independent businesses that cater to them. I think people might be surprised to know, or maybe not if they know your history, that even though you've had a, a, long, a long commitment to NDP as a political movement, and the, we'll call it the progressive left, uh, maybe because growing up in the city of Toronto, you've also been a very big proponent of the small independent business sector. Do you want to tell us what maybe you think are some policies that could help the small business sector? Because the policies we took impacted them probably the most. The most, yeah. We kept large-scale enterprises like Walmarts and big box stores open. We closed small Main Street stores, which I thought was a logical decision. Yeah. Should have put more the money into in the other way, yeah. promote Main Streets, which are open and full of air. And, and, and Anyway, we can go down that road. But how do we recover? How do you help that sector? Because yeah. it does affect everything from the social capital, the safety you feel. if every other shop is boarded up, it's not going to be conducive to the kind of city we want to see. Mm -hmm. do, do you have any thoughts there? Yeah, uh, well, one thing I wouldn't have done yeah. had I been on council was to up their fees uh, for their outdoor patio. Right, this is the because Cafe T.O. Cafe yeah. T.O., right? The summer is coming. Yeah. Please come outside. Yeah. People loved being outside. They did. That like, was one good consequence. Yeah, yeah. like Toronto, our summer is pretty, pretty small, small, right? right? Uh, so they've increased these fees for the small. That's right. So you see uh, the numbers of applicants dropped, dropped yeah. and I, I don't think that's the best idea. Right. Um, there are many other ways, helping to promotion, mm -hmm. uh, helping uh, to so they understand what kind of support. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of those Main Street folks, some of them are new in the country. Absolutely. They may not know what kind of small business programs mm -hmm. are available, right? Yeah. There, um, the city, actually small business promotion is the responsibility of a city government. Right. Because the feds and the province really they do a big multinational yeah. company. They bring that, the van plant or the that's right. new battery plant to a exactly. community. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The, the uh, Volkswagen one, for yeah. example. And we're right? just uncovering big. how much money was given to bring Whoa, that. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Look at the small businesses, right? They need the support. Mm -hmm. But even when there's support, they may not know about it. The mm. city of Toronto could provide the one-stop shop so sure. that they understand. Also, they could do promotion together because a lot of the small businesses don't necessarily have um, the wherewithal, the technology to do the promotion, right? Mm -hmm. So that also, the city of Toronto has wonderful BIA, That's right. business improvement area, right. and we can uh, cooperate and work with the BIA yeah. and come up with lots of good ideas. It mm -hmm. shouldn't be top-down because top-down usually doesn't work very well. Right. So don't take it just from a mayor point yeah. of view. Yeah. Ask the local uh, small businesses, what can we do to support you? And they have lots of ideas. They do. And do it through the BIA. It's interesting. that Many people don't know this, but uh, and I didn't know this till I got into this area and did, did some research. The business improvement area was a Toronto innovation. Absolutely. It, it works in, really well. Absolutely. And Blue yeah. West Village was the first to do this. Um, small businesses all pay an extra tax. They call That's it a levy, but it's a tax. Mm -hmm. But they get the money back and they get to decide how to spend it, where to invest it, uh, street festivals, all these beautiful things. The lights, the flowers. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. So, so I'm glad you mentioned that. In fact, the first candidate to do so. Oh, actually. really? Yeah, yeah. I've been around. <laughs> yeah, it does help. Yeah, I've done a lot with the local BIAs. Actually, My area, yeah. I used to represent downtown Toronto, right? right? Kensington Market, yeah. Chinatown, Little yeah. Italy, yeah. you name it. You probably had the most BIAs. I have yeah. a lot of BIAs. Yeah. Can I just mention something about that history many people don't know? Because it ties actually both things. I think mm. some of the feeling of disorder and the kind of city falling apart or being stuck and then also this revival of our main streets um, y you were part of a uh, I guess a, a program to help a small business person who had been 
uh, the victim of crime after crime, and then uh, finally took it uh, to his his own means by which to I think have a citizen's arrest. They were they were mm -hmm. finally fed up, and they uh, apprehended a person who had been actually uh, affecting the whole neighborhood. But then he was charged. I know. And, and you stepped in. Can you tell us a bit about that yeah. story? Yeah. Got the laws to change around that. Yeah, it's a our local grocery store. Very small. Well, they're not that small, but it's a completely family-owned. Yeah. Family yeah. works there. Yeah. He's there all the time, long hours. And he puts on camera. People just take stuff, right? right, he's right. That, his profit margin is tiny. Right. And if he, he loses a whole bunch of things, then yeah. there goes your, your, your profit. Mm -hmm. uh, and he has kids, too. right? right. And so. Um, and he call he keep, keep calling the police and the police you know by the time they show up or sometimes don't even show up you know, it's too late, so he yes as you said he apprehended someone got charged, really worried. Hmm. I thought the law, uh, the criminal law, was not fair. Hmm. So I I was a member of parliament at that time. So I mm. did a bill uh, called the Lucky Moose Bill. Right, that was <laughs> the name of the him. store. Yeah. That's the name of the store to reverse the owners to say that if you are protecting your property, mm. uh, uh, you you have to be proven that you meant harm. I see. Uh, so that passed the uh, oh. House of Commons, and uh, yeah, yeah, that that worked quite well. I was helping him, and uh, we took a petition from coast to coast to coast mm. because this wasn't just happening in. Right. Toronto was impacting in other parts of uh, this, the, the country. Yeah, and people feel that, you know, we created a hit series in Toronto based around the impact that a little store could have, Kim's Convenience, right? Oh, yes, that's yeah. right. That's but, great. But every neighborhood has that local institution. That's right. And it's small scale, but it has a big impact. So, But that's where the neighbors meet up. Right. They know everybody. Tend, yeah, that's yeah right. they tend yeah. to gather, mm -hmm. and it becomes a gathering point for a lot of neighbors. So maybe now we can widen the, the, the spectrum. These are very good particular issues. We're talking about particular neighborhoods. Maybe to sort of wrap it up, what is the, then the big vision? Like what, what would make citizens who've known you for a long time, both in the city and across the country, vote for you now as mayor? What, what would that be uh, sort of the message that you want to leave the audience with? Wow. Uh, I've made a choice uh, to run as your mayor. Say no to those people that tell you your vote doesn't matter, that you could be, uh, that you would, you can't do anything. Don't stand by, uh, but buy in to hope, to say that yes, together, we have the power to make a difference. It's not just a mayor, it's really getting involved, it's about opening City Hall, it's about participating in a meaningful way. So choose me and together we would create a city that is more caring, more affordable, safer, where people belongs. Hmm. Well, thank you, so I, I took away from that, don't stand by, but buy in. Right? That's yeah, the great tagline. Yeah, it's important because yeah. just standing by, yeah. yeah. So get out to vote. So June 26th, uh, Olivia, along with the other candidates that we've interviewed on the series, will be asking for your vote. We hope you show up. So with that, we'll end our series and see you at the ballot box. Mm -hmm.